on chapter six of your chemistry book. And we're going to go into chemical thermodynamics. And as you go through, there's some really important issues that are foundational, actually that come actually from the Bible too, that are foundational with science and pretty much links what the Bible says about science too. And so we're gonna get into that. But all true science and the Bible will go hand in hand. So let's talk about the chemical thermodynamics. So what is, what is chemical thermodynamics? Well, we're gonna go into some of these um, key symbols um, that have to do with thermodynamics, but when we talk about thermodynamics, thermo, of course, meaning heat, we're gonna talk about heat. So chemical uh, reactions in all uh, involve energy changes, like a reshuffling of atoms that are held together by chemical bonds. And there's energy that is required to break these bonds. And then when these bonds uh, are broken, a lot of times energy is released. And that's what this chapter is gonna be about, is this re um, release of energy is going to be in the form of heat. So thermodynamics means the study of flow of energy um, and especially to do with chemical reactions and that producing of heat. We call this chemical thermodynamics. So that's an important word. It's gonna be on one of your tests, thermodynamics. Um, basically the study of the flow of energy, right? So uh, let's talk about energy. Before we could talk about thermodynamics, let's talk about energy. So here in your book here, you talk in 6.1, um, goes over what energy is. Well, what is energy? What's the de definition of energy? Well, we know the definition of energy is the ability to do work. We've learned that before. I hope you remember that. So uh, we cannot measure directly this work sometimes, but we can measure indirectly to see its side effects, like a temperature change would be a side effect. So energy is so important in our surroundings and in our universe, right? Everything has to do with energy. We have some pictures there of um, potential energy. We have onto, which is stored energy, kinetic energy, chemical energy. Those are the three types of energy that we'll be talking about here and what the different types would be. So let's, um, let's continue. So let me go here. We're gonna talk about kinetic energy, but first I love what it says here uh, um, in your book. And so let's read this where it says, the law of the conservation of energy. So that's the important law of foundational of science is that energy can't be created and it can't be destroyed because God created energy. And so basically energy is always going to be there. It's not going to be destroyed and it's not going to be created. So that's foundational. That's a God thing. As Christians, we recognize this. And let's read this from Ecclesiastic here, here in your book. It says, whatsoever God do does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it or nothing can be taken from it. Ecclesiastic 3.14. Basically, what God does is constant forever, and that's God, you know. And so we have to realize that even our souls cannot be destroyed and we will live to get forever. If we live in the presence of God, of course, we want to be in heaven or otherwise. So it's so important that we know um, all these foundations of energy have to do with the fundamentals of our life today. So let's talk about kinetic and potential energy here. Kinetic energy, always know, and this will be a test question, I'm sure, kinetic en energy is associated with movement or motion. So kinetic energy, um, in this point, could be the movement of these, see the hot gases and how they're moving. That's the kinetic energy. So, uh, and on to what is potential energy? Well, potential energy is associated with the position of an object relative to a force on it. So potential, think of position, you know, position or stored up energy. 
So potential energy is basically this, uh, you take the picture there of that plane and what well, it definitely, as it's flying, it could, the potential energy that, you know, it could drop, you know, that'd be potential energy, but it holds potential energy in the plane. So that would be a type of potential energy. It's relative to the force upon it. So a uh, um, electron in an atom um, may hold a uh, potential energy, right? We know that. Like it's like water behind a dam, holding a dam. Up. There's a bunch of water, but once you take that, um, the the dam breaks. Once you take that barrier off, you're going to have a lot of uh, flow of water, and to the point of a lot of energy coming from that dam. You know, so that's potential energy. And then let's go on to the next here. So the next section, the next page. It's taking this from your book. So, um, of course, there's a picture there of the dam breaking that I just talked about. This would be mechanical energy coming from um, the dam breaking. Now, when the dam was holding it back, it would be potential energy. And this is um, this is uh, energy content analogy. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. So, let's go on to um, uh, what a system, this next part talks about systems and surroundings. Another two questions that I'm sure will be on your test. Well, what is a system and what is a surrounding? Well, the system here is the portion of the universe or sample of matter being studied. So if you're studying a certain sim uh, system, say that you're, stu um, you're studying um, an organism, some kind of organism, that would be the system you're studying. That would be what you're studying. So a system is that that study of that and the surroundings would be the remainder of outside of that the remainder of the universe would be your surroundings so always a system is what you're studying that little piece portion of the universe that you're studying is going to be called the system and your surroundings pretty easy so when you're studying something you're studying the system and when you're when you're looking at that system everything else in the universe is just the surroundings you got that so let's talk about eternal energy now. So what is internal internal energy? Well, internal energy is um, basically um, the sum of all possible forms of energy. That means the sums of all the ions, the sums of all the atoms and molecules and all these things in the system. That's the internal energy, which is in a system that we're studying. So the symbol for E, for energy, is going to be the symbol E all the time. That's the symbol that we're working with, right? So let's, let me point this out. So you have here the symbol E. So, and that's important for the symbol. So um, of course, the internal energy can have kinetic energy and potential energy. And these are due to the attractions and the repulsions between ions and atoms and molecules and, and all these subatomic parts in the system. So internal energy um, cannot be measured in itself, but the changes can. So we can take a changes in thermodynamics. We can take the changes of the rise in temperature, meaning there's more energy. So if the temperature rises, we have more energy. If the temperature falls, then we have less energy right? Internal energy is a state function. So let's talk about this. It's kind of important because this is on the test too and, and it's kind of can be kind of confusing. So right here we have the state function. Let's put there. Internal energy is a state function meaning that its value is determined only by the state of the system defined by the values of variables such as temperature and pressure. That is how a system arrived at a particular state and it does not affect the value of E. Internal energy, of course, is independent. This is important. Internal energy is independent of the path taken to reach a particular state and of the system's history. By analogy, a mountain climber's elevation is a state function, depending only on where he is, not on how he got there. So, for example, the internal energy of one liter of oxygen um, at 25 degrees centigrade and one atmosphere pressure right here is the same whether the oxygen was produced by a chemical reaction in the laboratory or by photosynthesis. Doesn't matter how they, you did it, how they got there. Um, 
we, we didn't really do it, but how they got there. We will refer to the internal energy of this system in this state as E. So suppose we increase the temperature and decrease the pressure. And that's a picture there. The internal energy at this state may be symbolized as E2. The change in eternal energy for this will be given in this equation. So you have E is basically um, basically whatever the final was, whatever the final um, temperature, the final um, amount of energy in this um, minus the initial, you'll have the change. And every time you have that delta, like this little triangle, that just means change. So the delta is placed before the quantity means change in. So that's another test question. Do you know that the delta means change? That delta is this little triangle, right? Right here, this picture is a little triangle. So the state function, when I think of state function, that's the state that it's in. It could be in a liquid state, gas state, whatever state it's in, you know, but that's important that the state function, remember, a value is only determined by the state of the system what's in the system, so that state function. Now, it's kind of hard for me to describe that, but that for sure is gonna be on your test because I'm gonna talk about state, and that state has to do with the eternal energy. And another picture of that we'll see in a little bit. Oh, this picture here. So, um, energy content analogy. Basically, you know, um, as for the, the energy, the state, the state of, of your, that you're, you're measuring, say you're measuring a mountain, well, it, are you gonna measure this mountain from sea level? Are you going to measure this mountain from this, this track up here? Or are you going to measure this mountain going up the side? So all these are different ways to measure how much, how much energy and how, how it took to get there. But a state function means, well, we're right at this. We don't really know how, which state we took to get up here, but here we are at the top. That's kind of that analogy is kind of... So, you know, basically, because when you're measuring a mountain, you've got to have a starting point to measure, right? Do we measure from the center of the earth or what? So that's that state function. It's a little bit hard to understand, but when you look at the mountain, this, this figure, you can see that's what they're talking about. So uh, now we're going to on um, from eternal energy. We're going to be talking about um, the first law of thermodynamics. And so the first law of thermodynamics says um, this law is the practical application of the law of conservation of energy. Remember I told you the law of conservation of energy cannot be um, uh, created or destroyed. And that's what the first law of thermodynamics really is, is this same law, you know, about um, whether it can, whether or not it can be created or um, destroyed. So that's the first law. So basically it says the, the, the first law of thermodynamics this law is a practical application of the law of conservation of energy. Just remember that. It has to do with the law of conservation of energy put into a mathematical um, formula. So uh, let's take a picture. Let's go back up to here. So we have energy here. Um, gas expands against its resistance and does work. You see how the gas is expanding here? With the amount, it has to do with pressure here and the amount of pressure there. And you can see how as gas is compressed here and the surroundings give off the system. So in this system, the heat of work, um, the system is on this side and it's basically, as it, as it goes, it's gonna be able to, um, you know, basically um, spontaneously, the gas will expand all over and fill up the whole volume, right? And here was the gas, and you're putting the pressure, the weight added, and then out of this system, you're going to basically put the system on this side, and energy of the system increases because the energy here will be stronger because it's compressed, is what they're saying. This is relationships of heat of work to the sign of energy. So, so let's talk about um, energy in this mathematical formula. So we have here heat is gonna always be Q. Just remember, the reason they don't put um, H because they're gonna use H for another form of heat. So whenever you see Q, you're just gonna say, that's gonna to have to do with heat. And heat is the transfer of energy between objects or systems in, in um, uh, basically in contact. They usually have to be contact with each other. 
So, and work, of course, work may be in lots of different forms, but this is um, one form of transfer energy by volume change. So this would be the volume change of work that we saw right here. See how the work is going to change because of the volume and the pressure. Actually, this is pressure, but also the pressure is increasing the volume there, so. But anyway, so going on um, with this equation is basically you'll see the equation here, energy equals, and this Q, just remember, it's kind of like algebra, they just have names so you can look at it easier, but sometimes they get confusing. But E equals heat plus work. So that's very important, heat plus work. So what are we talking, heat plus work? That heat is the transfer of energy, right? The Q, Q means heat, and work is um, the transfer of energy too, but in uh, different kinds of forms besides heat, right? In chemistry, all energy, all the energy that we have in the universe here, exchanges between the system surroundings are either um, heat or work. There's nothing else. There's energy has to be either heat or work. And that's why energy is going to be equaling the heat plus the work. So, and this actually is the first law of thermodynamics and that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So you have that. So energy is going to e equal all of the heat and all of the work. First law of dynamics is a practical application of it. So the increase in energy would give us a positive energy. So this is the work done on a system by the surroundings and heat added. And if the energy in the system was negative, it would be the, the work done by the system and surroundings, like the um, expansion of gas and the heat loss would be negative, right? So negative energy or positive energy, depending on what was lost and what was gained. When things are lost, it's gonna be negative. When, when I say things are lost, when energy is lost, things are gonna be negative. When energy is found, things are going to be positive. So that is you know, an important basics, basis there. Now, another thing we have here when we get into some of our problems is how do we measure? We have to have a standard unit to measure in, right? So the standard international unit, the SI unit, that's the unit that every country uses now for um, energy transfers and energy is the joule. Now it used to be the calorie. So here we have a calorie equals 4.184 joules exactly when we're talking in calories. And some systems, especially when we're talking, you know, about systems in our body and, um, you know, taking in calories and energy, they still talk in calories. But if you were using the SI unit, the standard unit, you would always talk in joules, joules, especially when you're talking about chemical thermal dynamics, which we're talking about. But a lot of times, since joule is such a small unit, we, they have to use kilojoules. So in a question, when you have um, joules, you're gonna always have to change them to kilojoules, which is basically you're going to, one kilojoule equals 10 to the three, so you're gonna have to divide you know, your joules by a thousand, right? So whenever you have a question that has joules and kilojoules, you know, oh, I'm gonna have to divide this by a thousand. Just think of that. So, because that will, that will get you off on your questions on your test, you know, so. So let's just go over this example really quickly. because one example here, because I think this example will probably be on your test too. So in a certain process, 45 joules of heat was added to a system while the system did 155 joules of work on its surroundings, what was the energy for the system? Okay, so remember we have the formula too. What formula we have? This formula up here, E equals heat plus work. So, um, so since the heat was added to the system, so what did they add to the system? The heat would be what? Um, the heat was added, was the heat added to the system so heat was added, that'd be 45 joules was added, we know that. And then the system also lost energy by doing work on the surrounding. So the work would be, they lost, you know, because the work was done, they lost that energy and it'd be negative 155 joules. It said the heat was added to the system and did work. When you do work, you lose energy, right? You're going out there doing work on something, we're going hard, you're losing energy, right? Work losing energy. So work is gonna be negative, and it'll be negative 55 joules. And so then we just take this, this problem here, um, E equals Q plus W, write that part equal, you know, so um, plus, so we 
fill in the blanks. We just take this problem, we're filling in the blanks. What is Q? Q is um, going to be 45. What is the joules of work that we used? 155. And so now we just add, we basically take 45 minus 155 and we get a negative 110 joules. So the system had a net loss of 110 joules of energy. Very easy, just using this formula, E um, equals Q times W, right? So now we know, um, so let's go down to, let's go down to the problem here. Problems, I should say, and you need to know these problems, some of these, what is energy? Do you remember that? Ability to do work, right? What law says that energy can be neither be created or destroyed? The law of the conservation of, of energy, right? Just think of conservation of energy. Or the law, basically that's the law of conservation of energy, but the law is stated in the first law of thermodynamics. So the law that states that energy can never be created is in the first law. I would say first law of thermodynamics that has to do with the conservation of energy law. So number three, distinguish between potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is stored energy, you know, or energy of position, stored. And kinetic energy is always moving, the energy of motion. What is a state function? Um, a state function is the value determined by the state system. When I think that whatever state it's in, the value of that function is. Remember the mountaintop and we had to figure out where, not how we got there, all the energy we used to got, but where we are. So that's a little bit, but basically that. Um, number five, what does E mean? Change, delta, that little delta, delta is that little triangle. Delta means change. So E means a change in energy that happens. So on to um, what sign would be the uh, internal energy change? It, uh, what sign would the internal energy change have if work was done by a system? So what, what, that means what sign would it be? Would it be negative or positive? That means what, what sign. Sometimes when I say sign, I think, oh, what is that? No, negative or positive. So if you would have um, an internal energy change and work was done, you would have a negative sign because that's what we had in this problem here. Remember, work was done, and so we had the work came out, the energy came out, so you'd be negative. Whenever there is heat or energy given off, you're always gonna have a negative, you know, basically going to the negative or to the negative sign, okay? So let's see, application. Let's see, in a certain process, 245 joules of work was done on a system on its surroundings and 45 joules of heat was lost to its SR, but it was the energy of the system, similar to what we did here. So if we fill in the blanks here, negative, uh, 245 is gonna be negative because it's work, right? So, and then on to, um, uh, it was done by a system on its surroundings and 44, um, uh, 44 joules of heat was lost. So you're going to have, let me put this here, see if you can read this here, maybe go. Hmm. It's kind of hard to see through here, but on a system, you have negative 45 joules and you have negative 245 joules, and then you just put them in the equations and you get a negative 290 joules, okay? So 290 joules, that would be that. So basically, you're a negative this and a negative this, and you add them together and you get 200, negative 290 joules. Make sure you have a negative because work done is negative and you lost, so you, you're losing energy. What is E for a system if 300 joules of heat is added to the system and no work is done? So you have this equation here, up here. That we have, remember, E equals Q plus W. Well, we have no work. So basically, what is it going to be? There's, since there's no work, work's going to be zero, right? And so... The, you, the system is going to be, um, if joule of heat is added to the system and no work, you're adding heat, you're going to add 300. So you don't have to add anything with work, you just, it's just going to be 300. So good way to do that. So uh, let me finish up here. I want to go over um, a little review here. So for your test, and then we're going to, um, I'll be going on to section two. And after section two, we'll go over the quizzes. 
and on to, um, so you'll have the quizzes all down too. So let me see here. Let me see if I can turn this here. Okay. Did it. That's a picture there of my little niece. But here I want to focus on this instead. Okay. So this is what I, you need to know here. So let's kind of let it go out all kind of crooked here. So um, these are the words you need to know. What is thermodynamics? So the chemical flow of energy. That's what we're studying. And now we're having chemical, so it's called chemical thermodynamics. That's a test question. Energy, what is energy? The ability to do work, right? That's another word you need to know. The law of conservation of energy is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. That's a God thing, right? And on to kinetic energy. Let's see, move it down. Kinetic energy is associated with movement, right here. Potential energy is associated with the position of the object. And a system is the portion of universe or sample that, of matter that we're studying. So that little system that we're studying and the surroundings are the remainder of outside of that. And so just know that. The state function is the value only determined by a state of a system. So basically that value that's only determined by where you're at in that system, okay? Internal energy is the sum of all possible forms of energy and all the ions and all the atoms and all the molecules in that system is gonna be all of its eternal energy. Of course, the delta sign we have here, what is the delta sign? The delta sign is going to be that sign of, it looks like a triangle and it means change in. It means, delta means it's a change in E. Internal energy is always, you're always gonna use it as an E for energy, right? Now we have this sign would be change in E if you wanna know change in energy, uh, change in um, energy. So the next I have here, of course, is um, the Q. You just always remember Q, what's Q? Q is heat, well, what is heat? Heat is the transfer of energy between objects or system. It's that heat that comes out. And the other is a work. And work, you know, comes in a lot of different forms. It's when someone uses or works off energy, right? That's work. And everything in energy in the universe is either heat or work. It's either heat or work. And then, of course, we have the first law of thermodynamics, and that law being energy equals um, um, heat plus work. And that's first law of thermodynamics, that energy cannot be created or lost. It's a practical application of it. And this is the equation of the first law of thermodynamics. Energy equals Q is heat plus work. And what is the standard unit that everyone uses here now? What is the standard unit? The joule, right? It used to be the calorie. In some places they use the calorie to measure um, heat and work, but now um, they've changed that and they always use the joule for the standard international system. And of course, when you have joules, because joules are so, so small, they're, they're always measured in kilojoules. So KJ, KJ means kilojoules. So whenever you have a sign joule, just divide it by a thousand. So 10 to the 30, so you change it from kilojoules. So. so that is actually those things you need to know for the test. So um, not that much really, just I hope I went over it and I hope you get it. So that's the first part of chemistry on thermodynamics.